Hi, I'm Zandy Peters, and I'm going to teach you how to weave in the ends of your striped color work as you knit. This is my Bear Claws pattern that I'm working on, and like a lot of my other patterns, it's got striped color work. And every time you switch colors, you're left with two yarn tails. So what I like to do is I like to use a special method to weave these in as I start my new color, and then I don't have to come back and sew them in during finishing. I went ahead and broke off my yarn so that I can add my next color. I left about 6 inches or 15 centimeters of space here. I'll trim this short after it's woven in. I'm going to get my next color here and I'm going to take the end and kind of match it up with this yarn that's hanging off of my project. Once those are kind of uh, smoothed together, I can start weaving them in. Now at this point, the instructions diverge depending on which hand you hold your yarn in. So I'm going to start with the yarn in my right hand and show you that method. If you hold the yarn in your left hand or call yourself a continental knitter, skip ahead in the video to the next demo and you'll see me holding the yarn how you do. Let's get started. I'm gonna take my needle here and begin my row. I'm going to hold my yarn in my right hand like I normally would, and I'm going to take these two tails and put them in my left hand over my index finger, under my middle finger, um, and, and then over the rest of my hand to tension them. Tension's not going to be super important here. You just want to keep them um, out of the way and where you need them. I'm going to knit the first stitch like I normally would. I'm going to wrap my yarn and anchor that new color in. And then I'm going to start knitting my row. So I'm going to knit this first stitch um, normally. And then on the next one, I'm going to, for the first time, I'm going to weave. So I'm going to put my tails up into the back of my work. When I insert the tip of the needle, I'm going to go under those two tails. And then I'm going to wrap my stitch and pull it through. So those tails have gone over that stitch. Now I'm going to take those tails and put them down and out of the way and knit one as I normally would. Next stitch, I put them up insert my needle to knit the stitch under those two tails and pull my stitch through and then put it down and out of the way again um, and continue on with my row. And I'm going to do this for a while and you'll see on the back of my work um, it will look like the yarn is woven in. So let me flip this over so you can see. See how those tails are going up and down, up and down? Now I'll show you how to do this if you're a continental knitter. I'm back at the beginning of the row, ready to show you how to weave in if you knit continental style. I've got my yarn, obviously, my working yarn over my left index finger, and I'm going to hold my tails with my right hand over my index finger, under the middle finger, and over the rest of my hand um, as I knit. I'm going to get my needle ready here. And I'm going to start by just doing the stitch as I normally would in the pattern. It's a knit through the back, so I'm going to knit through that back loop. On the next stitch, I'm also going to just work one normally, as I normally would. And then I'm going to start weaving. So on that third stitch, I'm going to insert the tip of my needle here. I'm going to take these two tails and wrap them around to the front of the work, around both needle tips, and then pull my stitch through, and then unwrap and do a stitch normally. I'm gonna alternate between wrapped and unwrapped stitches. So insert my needles, pull my yarn down. You can let go of those tails once you wrap them, um, as long as you go back around um, the back of the needle to unweave them. And knit one normally. Knit one with my tails, unwrap, and knit one normally. And as you keep going, this will weave in those ends as you start your row. If we take a look at the back of this, it will um, look like the yarn is woven. You can see it going um, up and down and up and down through the back of the work. Once your piece is finished, most of your ends are going to be already woven in, but you don't want to trim these short before you block your piece, okay? What happens when you block, you stretch everything a little bit and these ends are actually going to pull out into that woven area. If you trim them short, an end that you know looks like it's long could end up back here because it snakes all the way out. So you want to wait and trim those after you've blocked. 
if you're using a woolly fiber like this Rowan felted tweed, those ends will lock in naturally as you wet block. If you're using something like bamboo or silk or linen, you may need to double back and make sure that those ends are secure. Yarn for this project and video was provided by Rowan. If you like the felted tweed yarn and you want to buy some for yourself, you can shop through my affiliate link. If you've been watching this video and you've been enjoying this Bear Claws uh, wrap that I've been demoing on, you can find this pattern on Ravelry and on my website. I'll put a link in the video description so that it's easier to find, and I hope this video was helpful and informative.